The aim of this video is to show you how to make a quick and relatively simple glowing abstract line image using Bryce 7.1 Pro. All right, this is the uh, empty scene. As you can see, we've just got the infinite ground plane in there, and I'm not even going to need that, so I'll just select that and delete it. Uh, there's the default sky, and if I switch to the overhead view, you can see the camera is facing what I'm going to call north. To set this up, we need a line to work with, and the line I'm going to use is the horizon. So I go to Sky and Fog, and I'm going to select Custom Sky, and I want to set all these three to fully black. If I hold Alt key down while clicking on the colour swatch, I can bring up this little menu that allows me to make sure they're set to colour black, and then I can use the colour picker to go to that one and make sure we're at fully black if I'm just select careful in my selection there. Okay. Hold the Alt key down, click on the cloud height, and that will switch the clouds off and now you can see we're in a position where we've got a line but it's not set up how I want it just yet if I go into the Skylab I'm going to turn the Sun and Moon off as a visible object if I move the Sun round you'll see it in the scene here I don't want this bright blob so I'll just switch that off and what I want is for the Sun colour even though it's turned off as a visible object and in fact I can disable the Sun and I don't need shadow casting to interact with the colour of the haze. So I'm going to set the sun colour up, so hold the old key down, click on the colour swatch, and I want uh, 255 green, uh, 60, no, no, I want 255 red, 60 green, and 10 blue to create sort of a ready orange colour. And the reason that stuck around is Camtasia Studio interfering. If I go to atmosphere now, and oh, I want to show you this in the preview. You can see the position of the sun, if I set it very low on the horizon and directly in front of the camera, is making the horizon colour change. So if I switch to the main view and then I go to 360 degree panoramic projection, so this is the colour of the horizon as it's been set up. Now, if I select blend with sun, it'll localise that colour change for me. So now if I switch back to the view, where the sun's in front of me the horizon is red and where it is not it uh, reverts back to the colour it's set at which is sort of white colour but I want to change that so back in the Skylab I'm going to change the haze to density 1, thickness 1, turn the fog off while I think about it, switch to colour perspective and choose a colour perspective of 50, 40, 10, 10 right so that's sort of an orange color and the result of that's going to be a fairly thin line and it goes from red round to this orangey color that I've already defined at the edges here now if I choose to rotate the sun around 90 degrees to the right that'll make the image asymmetrical as far as colors concerned but at the moment it's quite boring so to do something with this line I'm going to create a default bright sphere and I'll enlarge it slightly and I'm going to create three of these so I'm just copy and paste and offset them but I'm offsetting them symmetrically so the image we get will be symmetrical. If I select all three and modify the material for these set the diffusion down to zero and have a hundred transparent and a hundred reflection the result of this is that that horizon line when I make these large enough to fit around the camera I'll group them and enlarge them now or do I not do that? The effect of the different scales of these and their overlapping will change. You've got to ima imagine these are both mirrors and transparent. So I just position them roughly around the camera in some pattern and see what the result is. Okay, so this is what's happened due to all these interreflections and interactions of these spheres. If I'm uh, in 360 degree panoramic projection as well, tilting the camera back creates a sort of sine wave out of the horizon so yeah, the, the pattern already looks quite complicated even though we've only got these three mirrors if I modify and get hold of the centre one that to a different scale then I'll link these two outer ones I can just group them this uh, process is just a bit random really you just have to experiment until you get something you like the look of like that for example suppose say well this is an interesting pattern but I want it to be a little bit more complex I can go into the render options and just increase the maximum ray depth and that will allow more interreflections to occur so suddenly it gets a lot more complex as you can see so that's uh, a very quick way to create a complicated looking abstract pattern but all these lines are a little bit uniform so what you can do to differentiate between these and I'm just going to reduce the document setup to aid render time here so I'll 
render it at uh, half its resolution is if I select all three spheres now which uh, should be fairly easy I'll just use a sphere selection tool here go into the material lab I'll choose uh, anisotropic effect and make it fully black and give it a hundred and then if I choose specular halo this uh, controls the level of blur in premium effects and then I'll set it down to I don't know um, 80 okay and then switch back to the main view go into render options and I go premium effects I'll leave it at 64 and choose blurry reflections the into reflections the further away it's got from the original horizon line the more blurred the line's going to become because as it bounces off each surface it'll become slightly more blurred so that'll help differentiate between the different lines as you can see even on my fairly fast computer this is a slow process because of all the inter reflections and of the uh, sampling that's having to take place with uh, with 64 rays per pixel and the anisotropic part of the reflection will cause the reflections to be um, become more stretched in one direction determined by the vector of color that chosen for the anisotropic th effect this, in this case black uh, than it does in other directions. I'm not sure what the vector effect of black is going to be actually. I suppose I should have thought about that before I set it. But uh, it seemed to work with the uh, water, so I suppose it'll work with this. So we'll see what the result is when this is finished. And uh, that's just a very quick way to create this sort of glowing line abstract image effect. While this one was rendering, I used the task manager to uh, free up some of the cores of the processor to start on a, another one. Uh, this one is essentially set up the same. There's three spheres, but I've, I've not positioned them symmetrically around the camera. And uh, you can see them here, various different sizes. And I've added to this scene Horro's uh, wide-angled lens, or extra wide-angled lens, one of those two, just to show you what the effect of uh, producing it through this is. Uh, how it varies from using the, as, it, as we were before, 360 degree projection. This is a perspe perspective projection with a very wide setting on it. And when you tilt the camera back using this, the horizon, instead of becoming a sine wave like it does with the uh, 360 degree panoramic, it becomes a circle. So I thought, well, would it be interesting to do something similar? And I'll just run through the settings I've selected. So we've got uh, in the image based lighting, nothing set in the atmosphere. Uh, I've got the density set up at 91, the thickness at 1. We've got an orange colour here. What's that? 255, 149, and 52. Uh, colour perspective 8, 5, 3. Blend with sun, they're set at 100. Uh, the fog switched on, but I don't think it's doing anything at the moment. And this sun colour is just fully red and it's set round at that position there which is slightly off to the right I suppose just uh, again it's interacting with the uh, I think there's a scene sort of moon is turned off and the sunlight's disabled and in the material for these we've got um, diffuse but there is no sunlight so it doesn't really matter and I drop I've left it its default setting and the specular halo is critical because that's degree of uh, blurring and that's set at 99 so with this set pointing up we've got this asymmetrical pattern and with this uh, applied in the premium effects a higher rate pixel will reduce the amount of noise but it will increase the render time so if I set blurry reflections on this you can expect that to be about three hours and as you can see by running it in conjunction with the other one then it's going to be quite slow but I just thought I'd show you the effect of the wide angled lens because that circle is actually the horizon and this these things this is below the horizon the, and towards the back of the camera because the camera's pointing up and the things in the middle is everything that's above the horizon but it's like bunched in by the fisheye lens and compressed into the middle which should uh, offer an alternative effect and hopefully it won't be too long before the uh, the, the lenses systems and the filters are available on in the dust store so a little bit of an advert thrown in there as well right I'll let this one render out and the other one render out and that'll be the end of the video